YouTube, today I'm going to give you a quick and short video tutorial on how to do your very own engine oil change on your 7th generation Honda Civic or 2nd generation Acura EL. The years that are being covered in this tutorial are 2001 through 2005. Whether it be an Acura EL or a Honda Civic, the procedure is exactly the same. Begin by putting a wood block or a suitable wheel chalk on the rear wheels um, to prevent the vehicle from moving back. Very firmly apply the rear parking brake as tight as you can get it to prevent the vehicle from moving back when the front end of the car is being raised. Locate the front central rad support jack point on the front cross member of this vehicle. Um, as you can tell here by this water splash guard, there's an arrow pointing directly to it, which is this beam here uh, with the hole through it. You can actually just place your hydraulic jack onto that location and raise the entire vehicle uh, from that central point. If your splash guard is missing where you don't see this front arrow, the easiest way to locate it is look directly at the front of the vehicle, locate the center of the bumper, and then follow that line back until you see that jack point. Whenever working with a hydraulic jack and you're raising your vehicle and working underneath it, make sure that you use a suitable set of appropriate jack stands and place them at the jack support points located directly behind the front wheels for the front or directly in front of the rear wheels on the back. If you're not sure where that support point is, you can sort of see that there's a tab here directly behind this front mud guard. This is what the jack stand looks like with the vehicle lowered onto it. Always give the jack stands on the bottom a good wiggle to make sure that there's no play and also give the vehicle a good push just to make sure that everything's nice and stable. My jack stands are set to exactly the same height for both the left and right side. Ensure that you have a suitable sized drain pan that can hold at least 5 or more liters of engine oil. Having some paper towels or some shop rags handy as well as the appropriate tool that you will use to remove the drain plug. The engine oil drain plug is located on the oil pan which is on the driver's side of the vehicle directly beside the driver's side cross member that this suspension attaches to. As you can see on the bottom of this oil pan it actually does state engine oil with an arrow pointing directly at this 17 millimeter drain bolt. Using your 17 millimeter ratchet or 17 millimeter wrench, proceed to remove the engine oil drain bolt. Pay careful attention that when you're removing the bolt that you remove this aluminum crush washer or copper crush washer along with it. As a service step, it always helps to warm up the engine for a few minutes before you drain the engine oil. This ensures that you get a faster and more thorough drain because the oil is less viscous. While the engine oil is draining, we can prepare the new engine oil filter for reinstallation. Most Honda oil filters, if not all Honda oil filters, come pre-wrapped in a cellophane plastic from the factory. One of the common mistakes that people make when they're opening up these oil filters is that they jam their finger into the center hole to open up the cellophane wrapper. And that's actually in fact a fatal mistake, as some we've seen in several instances where this little piece of plastic ends up being jammed inside this filter, and then when the vehicle starts up and the engine oil goes through these side holes and then out the center core, it will actually jam your oil pump and actually do irreparable damage to your motor because of oil starvation. When you're opening up these oil filters or any oil filter wrapped in cellophane plastic, it would be advisable to just use a flat blade screwdriver and open up the cellophane plastic from the top of the oil filter and peel off the filter in such a manner and then also paying close attention inside the filter to make sure that there's no plastic bits and pieces inside that could potentially damage your oil pump. Using some clean engine oil on your finger, apply some oil onto the rubber gasket on your new oil filter prior to reinstallation. Remove the old aluminum crush washer on the end of your drain bolt. Wipe your drain bolt clean with a clean paper towel. And then take your new aluminum crush washer, and sometimes it can be copper by the way, but this one I got is aluminum. Place it onto the end of the drain bolt. When the engine oil has basically completed draining out of your car, take a clean rag and just wipe the mating surfaces of where the drain bolt will reattach to on the oil pan just to make sure that there's no dirt. Take your clean drain bolt as well as your new aluminum crush washer and reinstall it onto the oil pan. The oil drain pan bolt doesn't need to be tightened excessively and all you need to do is hand screw this drain bolt until it contacts the oil pan and then using your 17 millimeter ratchet or wrench just tighten it about oh maybe a, you know an eighth 
maybe a little bit more I wouldn't even say a quarter inch of a turn because or a quarter turn because that's not true um, you can generally feel it you can sort of feel the crush washer kind of just butting up against the back of the drain bolt and the oil pan and then it'll begin to develop a little bit of friction and all you need is just a little bit more of a turn uh, to tighten it up and that's it you would rather under tighten the bolt than to over tighten it because if you under tighten it you can always torque it down a bit more to stop a leak but if you over tighten it and strip the threads in this drain pan you're going to have to either put a Healy coil in there to fix the th strip threads or you're going to have to replace this expensive oil pan altogether. The next step is that we're going to remove the old oil filter off the engine and what I found works really good on these Hondas uh, and Acuras uh, is using this type of rubber band oil filter remover um, or the ones, the cap style ones that go onto the end of a ratchet. Uh, it's really a matter of personal preference. I like using these BOA constrictor wrenches, I guess, so to speak, because they're just really easy to use. And essentially how I'm going to demonstrate this to you, because it's hard to videotape me doing it underneath the vehicle, is that I'm going to take this BOA and I'm going to essentially wrap it around the oil filter. Not necessarily in this direction, guys, but in a nutshell, this is what it's going to look like. And you're just going to pull this rubber band back as far as you can until it's nice and tight and then basically you're just gonna turn it in the direction to unscrew the oil filter and this you want this wide end to contact the side of the oil filter uh, that unscrews so like anything when you're moving bolts lefty loosey righty tighty for those that don't know where the oil filter is located on this generation of Acura EL and Honda Civic um, just imagine looking straight down from where this air cleaner housing is directly below uh, and that's where it's located. So you see that white canister above this driver side CV axle? That is the engine oil filter. Once you've loosened the oil filter with your oil filter wrench you can just sort of let the oil drizzle out until it stops dripping and it would also be useful to have some rags on hand to uh, wipe up any mess that comes down the back side of the engine. Once the engine has stopped running down the back side of the engine you can then proceed to completely remove the oil filter reinstall the new oil filter. When you're installing this filter make sure that you carefully f screw this filter onto the threads properly and that you don't actually inadvertently cross thread this oil filter onto the uh, oil filter nipple as I've seen it happen in the past as well as when you're tightening this that you just need to make sure that this is hand tight and by hand tight in this particular instance you just basically want to keep turning this oil filter until it, you can't turn it any further by hand. Do not any under circumstances use any tools such as that uh, BOA tool or the uh, cap style oil filter wrench to tighten this filter on. There is not really any way that this will come off if it's tightened properly by hand uh, and I strongly do not advise using any tools to apply additional and unnecessary torque onto these delicate oil filter threads. Using a rag just wipe up the oil down the back side of this oil pan as well as that little lip or wing on the engine block. Locate the engine crankcase filler cap as well as engine oil dipstick located here and here. Pay attention to the type of oil requirements that this vehicle calls for. On the cap it will tell you that it requires 5W20 which I'm going to be putting into this vehicle. But for those that don't have easy access to 5W20 you can always substitute with 5W30 with no ill effect. Fill the engine crankcase with 3.8 liters of engine oil. You can always add up a little bit uh, oil if it's not enough. The type of oil I'm going to be using is a Quaker State 5W 20 grade oil, um, non-synthetic, that you can essentially purchase pretty much at any of your local automotive uh, service locations. Raise the vehicle back up and remove jack stands from both sides of the vehicle. Double check everything underneath the vehicle and ensure that any unwanted items such as oil drain pans, tools and any other items that you use during your vehicle serving, servicing is removed from the bottom of the vehicle and proceed to lower the car back on to its front wheels. After your initial fluid fill, check your engine oil level prior to starting the engine. So as you can see on my dipstick, the oil level is right about here. So that means my crankcase is more than sufficiently filled. Proceed to start the engine and then let the engine run for several minutes. Shut off the engine, wait five minutes, and then recheck fluid level. 
While the vehicle is running, it's also a good idea to take a look to make sure that there's no fluid leaks from the appropriate drain plugs, whether they be on your engine or your transaxle. Make sure that you look in the oil filter area to make sure that there's no engine oil leaks in the oil filter region. Typically speaking, when there's a leak that's developing, you will promptly see it within the first few minutes of operation. If there's any leak detected, immediately shut the engine off and proceed to recheck your steps and installation procedures. Now that my engine's been run for about 5 minutes and there's no signs of leaks from the oil filter or drain plug area, I'm going to recheck my fluid level now. As you can tell from my dipstick here, that oil level is just slightly above the upper dot, which means it's filled properly.